In this video, you will learn how to use the PostgreSQL create table statement to create a new table in your database. PostgreSQL is RDBMS, or Relational Database Management System, like many others, such as MySQL, SQLite, Microsoft Access, and the SAP MaxDB. But what is Relational Database? A relational database consists of multiple related tables. And the table consists of rows and columns that allow you to store structured data like customers, products, and employees, for instance. To create a new table, you use the create table statement. First, you need to specify the name of the table after the create table keywords. Then we need to specify a comma separated list of table columns. Each column consists of column name, the kind of data that column stores, the length of data, and the column constraint. The column constraints include not null, unique, primary key, foreign key, and check constraints. And finally, we need to specify the table constraints, including primary key and foreign key. Table constraints are similar to column constraints, except that they are applied to more than one column. And let me give you an example on that. On line one, I said, create table, customers. That's telling the database to create a new table, which is a set of rows and columns. And we are going to name it customers. And then I need to tell the database in advance what types of information my customer's table is going to contain, so we will see that information one at each row. The first column, or field, that our table will contain is the ID. And this is a very common paradigm when we design databases. We want it to be easy to reference each individual customer. So, for instance, when we will say, get me customer number 19, and give me some particular information about that customer, is easier than saying, get me customer with this email and that phone number or any other attributes of that customer, for instance. And this ID will be of type serial. And serial is an integer data type, but it's automatically incremented or automatically counted. So first customer will be customer one, second customer will be customer two, and so on. And primary key constraint. Primary key constraint is the primary way via which I'm going to reference a customer. So when we will say ID number 19, this will map to one and only one customer. The next column is first name of the customer and will have a varchar data type. And we can specify the length of the first name to the maximum of 255 characters. As we don't know exactly how many characters each customer first name will contain we can additionally specify other properties or constraints to be forced on that field. In particular, I'm saying not null. So SQL databases support the idea that a column may or may not have a value. And in some case, you might want that a column doesn't necessarily need to have a value, but can have a value if you want it to. So in this particular case, the customer needs to have a first name, and I don't want a customer in my customer's table unless it does have a first name. So not null means that the first name cannot be empty. And if you try to add a customer where the first name is empty or not provided, the database should reject that. So you can begin enforce constraints on what the database will or will not allow by adding these additional constraints after the data type. So we will have our field or column, then the data type, and then the constraint. And likewise, we have the last name, which exactly the same. It's of type varchar, not null, which means it cannot be empty. An email address of type varchar with 255 characters. And for this column, I specify the constraint to be null, which means it can be empty because not everyone should have an email address. For the phone number, it's of type integer. And the difference between the integer and the serial, both are numbers but the serial is auto-incremented by SQL, while the integer is numbers that you will put manually. And the phone number has a constraint of not null, which means it's obligatory to have a phone number for each client. And the last column or field is the number of complaints, which of type integer and has a constraint of null, because not all the customers should have complaints. 
All right, now we have seen that, let me show you the constraints that are available in PostgreSQL. The first constraint that we have is not null, which ensures that values in a column cannot be null, that is, cannot be empty. Unique constraint ensures the values in a column unique across the rows within the same table. And you might use unique constraint for an email address, for instance. You want to make sure that that email address is not redundant across the table in any other row. Primary key constraint. And like I've mentioned earlier, this is a primary way via which I'm going to reference a row. A foreign key, which is a key used to link two tables together. A foreign key also is a field or collection of fields in one table that refers to the primary key in another table. The foreign key constraint is used to prevent actions that would destroy links between tables. Unlike the primary key, a table can have many foreign keys. The last constraint is check, and a check constraint ensures the data must satisfy a Boolean expression. Right here, this is the syntax for check. So I have birth date, which is the name of the field or the column, date, which is the data type, and the constraint of check. And this constraint right here evaluates to whether true or false. If birth date is more than this date right here, then this will be acceptable. Otherwise, it will be rejected. So a check constraint ensures the data must satisfy a Boolean expression. Now let's take a look to the relational schema and focus on the customer's table. And schema is another fancy way of layout. This is the schema or the layout of our database. And our database name is sales that contains four tables, sales, customers, items, and companies. But in this video, we'll concentrate only on creating that table right here, customers. So let's go ahead and open our PSQL and write some code. So the server, database, port, username, and your password. First of all, let's check our databases. Backwards slash L, I have one database, which is my underscore DB. I don't want that, so let me drop it. Okay. Let me create now a database called sales. So we'll say create database sales space semicolon and enter. Now our sales database is successfully created. Let's check that. Indeed, we have sales in our list of databases. Okay, good. To access the sales, we'll simply say backward slash C, which stands for connect and the name of the table. And now we are connected to database sales as user Postgres. Inside our database, let's go ahead and create our table, which we have right here. So let's take that, let's copy it and paste it. Enter. And now we have created the table customers inside our sales database. To verify if we have really created our table customers inside the sales database, we will hit backward slash and D. And indeed, we have a public schema of the name customers with the type of table and the owner is Postgres. Sequence means that we have only one serial data type, which is the customer ID. To only check the table without the sequence, you hit backward slash and DT. And now you get only one row. Now we have created our table. It's still empty. We don't have any data inside it. So in order to insert records or data in our table, we will need the insert query. And let me show you the syntax for the insert query. So here simply I'm specifying the insert query, which will be followed by the name of the table that we have just created a moment ago and then the fields. So we have a first name, last name, email address, phone number, and number of complaints. All these fields are wrapped in parentheses. Then a keyword values followed by the values that we want to insert in each field respectively. John, 
which is the first name, Doe, last name, jdoe at mail.com, which is the email address, the phone number, and the number of complaints. So if we'll take that line right here, we'll copy it, and we'll get back to our PSQL, we'll paste that, we'll hit enter, then it has been successfully entered. For the sake of time, I've prepared a bunch of more insert statements, which is right here. So we will take those, we'll copy them, and let's paste them right here. We'll hit enter. Perfect. Now we have entered these rows or these records inside our customer's table. We cannot see them yet. In order to retrieve or see the data or the records inside our table, we will need a special query called select. And what we want to select? Well, we want to select all. This means that I want to select everything from the table. And this will be followed by from keyword and the name of our table, which is customers, space, semicolon, and enter. Great. Now we have displayed the table called customers with the different columns or different fields. Customer ID, like we have seen, is auto increment, which is of data type serial. Then we have the first name, the last name, the email address, the phone number, and number of complaints. Notice that Rachel Ryan she doesn't have an email address. And this is totally fine because the email address has a constraint of null, which means that this field can be empty. Actually, you can see it here. She has only a first name, last name, and phone number. If we want to select only first name and last name from customer's table, we can do that as well. We will say select first name, comma, last name from customer's table. Great. What if we want to get a specific record using the phone number? Let's say this phone number right here, which belongs to Bob Davids. Well, to do that, we will use the select query followed by all from the name of the table. Then we'll use where keyword or where clause. And this plays the role of the filter, which is filtering the table by this specific phone number, which we wanted for Bob Davids. Phone number, which is the name of the column, is equal to, and let's type the number, 525. 1795 space and followed by semicolon and there it is we have only customer ID number three with the first name and last name of Bob Davids and with this number and this shows that he has never complained okay so this was how to create a table in PostgreSQL how to insert records in a table and how to retrieve data using the select query. I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next videos.